All right, it is one o'clock, so we'll get started. That's my dog. She's going to probably be barking the whole time. Um, so Jesse is going to be up first. So let's do all questions for Jesse first, and then we will go to Alyssa Palomino Cardoza. All right, who wants the first question? Yes, uh, do I ask a question, Danny? Yeah, you're good. Go ahead. Yes, you do. Okay. I, I didn't know I was. Um, Jesse, I saw your interview with NCA uh, last week. Um, you talked a lot about what you're doing now. What, 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 what if, in fact, are you doing with your hitting, though, at this time? How are you able to do that at your house? Well, in my garage right now, I currently have a tee and a net set up. So I've been hitting off the tee and then um, just obviously trying to stay safe and not do good, do anything too crazy. But I do have access to a field that my dad has been like throwing center toss to me at and things like that. But definitely trying to maintain boundaries from other people to stay safe because we are in a stay at home order here in California. Um, but definitely just I do a lot of mirror drills, just looking at myself in the mirror and evaluating my swing that way, but trying to do little things, going back to the basics um, to really just try and maintain my comfortability within my swing. Thank you. Jesse, apologies if you've been asked this before, but can you please uh, expand on your decision of, of why you'd like to come back for your senior year next year instead of just going on what you would have been doing in 2021 had we had a normal season? Yeah, so I knew without a doubt I wanted to come back if given the opportunity to play again. Um, that season ending that way was just so abrupt and just out of the blue to me um, that I really wanted the opportunity to come back and really finish what I started with my teammates. Our senior class is something special. So to get that opportunity to play with them and really just make it a full circle of finishing freshman year through now my fifth year senior with them um, is something special and that I'd be thankful for. But definitely without a doubt, 100%, I was going to come back if I was given the opportunity. And I'm so thankful that the NCAA has given us that opportunity to come back. Um, but definitely, I wanted to finish what I started. I love softball. I love everything that Arizona has to offer. And I just wanted the opportunity to compete again with my best friends. Yeah, Jesse, um, you know, I know Wisconsin is one of those schools that they didn't allow the seniors to come back. Uh, you know, was that an automatic for you guys that if, you, if the NCAA approved um, of the extra year that you guys were coming back, or did you not know? Uh, what was that discussion like? Well, we've been having a lot of open com uh, communication with our coaches. Coach has been awesome. He's been battling for us this whole entire way. Um, he knew that without a doubt that he was gonna try his hardest to get us the opportunity to either choose if we wanna come back or not. Um, coach seemed from when I talked to him, it seemed like if the NCAA was going to pass it, that Arizona was going to back that 100%. Um, Dave Hickey has been with us the whole way, our athletic director really fighting for us. Um, so I didn't even think it was even a shadow of a doubt that once NCAA granted it, that I couldn't come back. Um, so when I saw that for Wisconsin, I was really feeling for him. Um, that's not what, something you want to go through, especially when you found out that NCAA guaranteed it, but then that school that you've played for for so long tells you no, that's really hard. Um, so I know those uh, people involved with that school are, and the students are going to have to make tough decisions if they want to transfer and continue on to play or if that's just kind of it. Um, but I definitely feel for them. I'm so thankful that Dave Hickey has been fighting for us along with all of our coaches. But yeah, it's going to be some tough decisions for those Wisconsin players and what they're going to do moving forward. Uh, Jesse, uh, if things get back to normal, let's say by June, um, what are your plans this summer? What are you going to be doing this summer, uh, heading into the fall? Yeah, I mean, everything seems like such a big question mark right now. Um, definitely, I would want to go back to Arizona and train there and work on their, with their facilities. Um, 
but right now I'm just kind of at home doing whatever I can to stay in shape. Um, my sister's here, so I've been working out with her and doing that type of stuff. But I would love to go back to Arizona. I mean, I only packed a week worth of clothes. So I'm here in California with very limited clothing and I don't have my car. My car is still in Tucson. Um, so I definitely will be making the trip back to Tucson. I can stay there over summer if I want to. But right now I'm just trying to take every day as it is. But definitely once the stay at home orders are lifted and I'm free to travel and everything is safe net then, I will definitely be doing more consistent softball and hopefully to go back to Arizona for a little bit. And what are some other things you've been doing to kind of occupy your time? I know you just got a new dog recently, right? Yeah, so I have a puppy. So we're kind of playing with her and trying to train her a little bit, but our family near our house, there's a few different hiking trails. So we've been walking to the hiking trails and doing that. Um, my grandparents have a tennis court in their backyard. So my family, we've been trying to pick up tennis. Um, my mom played tennis in college and high school. So she's been helping me out a little bit there, but just something to keep our mind off of this crazy time and keep us busy. So um, we go on a lot of bike rides, just kind of doing stuff outdoors that are obviously safe and what you still can do and not be around too many people. But yeah, hikes, tennis, bike riding, the dog. Other than that, just kind of twiddling my thumbs, <laughs> trying to get the days to go by. But um, yeah, that type of thing is what we've been doing over here. A lot of family competitions, a lot of game nights, things like that. You know, obviously we've had Alyssa here on, on coming up next and, and you've made your decision. What has it been like talking to your teammates and trying to figure out, uh, this is such a personal decision whether to come back and you've got to decide a lot of, a lot of stuff rides on this. So, you know, what has that discussion been like with some of your other teammates and, you know, how, how do you handle, obviously your competitor, you want everybody to come back, you want everybody to be on the team, but there's other conflicting interests for some people. Yeah, for sure. Uh, this is this is life. This is what you have a plan to do. Um, so you definitely have to respect everyone's decision. I know when we first found out the news, a lot of our seniors came together and were like, no matter what, we're coming back. We need to. This is what we want to do. Um, but definitely you can't put too much pressure on your teammates. This is their decision at the end of the day. They have to do what's best for them. I know that some people have other plans going on next year and what they have to do. But at the end of the day, we just have to support our teammates and whatever decision is best for them because we want them, obviously, I want my teammates to come back and be able to finish it with them, but definitely have to take a less selfish approach and just respect whatever decision they make. But I've been talking to a lot of my senior girls and just kind of hearing their side of things, what works out best for them. But I'm hoping everyone will be able to come back and that I'll be able to finish it with my senior group. But definitely just have to respect everyone's decision at this time and not really put too much pressure on them because there are a lot of question marks moving forward still. Jesse, how much did the home run chase have to do with it? Would you say? Um, it actually had nothing really to do with it. Um, I think when I first found out the news, when coach was the one to break it to us that it was official that, it's out of his control. He doesn't have the power to really t change the NCAA's mind on his own because, you know, coach is so amazing, has so much pool within the softball world. So I figured as soon as coach had to talk to us, you know, he'd be the one to fix it, that he'd, he'd make everything better. But when he had to tell us that, hey, guys, you might want to consider going home. This might be the end of it for you, but we're going to fight for you. Uh, I just kind of thought of like my first thing was I'll never have the opportunity again to make my family proud with on on the softball field that I will never be able to perform again with them for them on that stage so that's what kind of hurt me the most so for me it just thought back to everything that my parents have done to get me to this stage and really help me become the player that I am today that I really wanted to do it for them and really just make the most out of everything that I've been given from softball. So definitely my parents and my family had had a huge influence on me wanting to come back because when I first found out that we wouldn't be able to play again, I instantly thought about not being able to play in front of them again and really make them proud. So didn't really have anything to do with the whole home run thing. I think that's just an added thing that people want to talk about for, but for me personally, it's just 
playing in front of my family, in front of the fans, and playing with my best friends, and just really finishing what we started. With some of the seniors back, and, and maybe all of them, and then the, the players that you're adding, what do you see as the upside of this team next season? Well, we're going to have a lot of girls. We'll have a lot of depth. So that's always one that Coach talks about, um, a lot of depth. But I, don't really, I can't really comment too much on the new girls coming in. But I know if we get all our girls coming back again this next year and with added them, we'll have a lot of depth. But I think we're all just really – this has taught us to never take anything for granted, to really take pride in putting on that uniform. It'll give us another sense of like pr uh, pride when it comes to wearing the A, that you never know when it's going to be your last game and just really make the most of every single opportunity you have. But yeah, I mean, I want everyone to come back. I think our team is going to be lights out if it comes next year. Um, I know Deja has a few things to figure out with the Olympic trial uh, Olympic team, but I would love for her to come back too. Um, our team would be pretty stacked with that with her back too. She's got to wait and see. Big question marks. <laughs> hey Jess, may um, what has Coach Candrea communicated with you during this time? How often are you able to talk with him? Oh, coach is super easy to get a hold of. I'll just text him up and say, hey, coach, can you call me? And he calls me right away. So um, we've had a few team Zoom meetings where he's just kind of got us together to kind of hang out and talk as a team. But coach is super easy to talk to. You can call him whenever. He's always in your corner. Um, so I actually talked to him before this. So um, he's really easy to get a hold of. But I know he is super busy, but he always makes it um, – a, us a priority and really tries to get a hold of us to see how we are doing but I know coach is doing everything he possibly can he says he's been on zoom meetings all day every day since this has gone down but I know he's fighting for us and wants us all to get back on the field together soon you mentioned earlier about the um the roster size being so big do you kind of see that as like a like a good thing or like a bad thing you know to have that uh, like a locker room full of you know 30 40 girls instead of like a smaller roster like that. How do you think you're going to be able to kind of balance that and that the chemistry, I guess, with that many people? Yeah, well, it definitely is going to be different. That's if we have as everyone comes back with 27 or something girls, that will definitely be the biggest team I've ever played for. Um, but just got to take it as a blessing. We all are in this together at this point. Um, I think we'll bring back a bigger sense of pride that, hey, some of these girls that I never thought I was going to play with, I get the opportunity to play with again, um, things like that. But at the end of the day, all schools are going to be in the same boat. All, um, I watched an interview with Beth Trina, the LSU coach. She said she didn't have 33 girls on the team, so that will even be bigger than ours. So this is just what college softball and college sports are going to be like for spring sports. There's going to be big rosters. You're going to have to find a way to really build that chemistry with that many girls. But on the end of the day, I think everyone's just going to be so thankful that we have the opportunity to play again, that all of that is just going to be outside factors that you'll work on. Um, but definitely that's just going to be what college softball is, big rosters. And uh, what do you think of uh, Alyssa? I mean, she's had two ACL tears, and now she's had a season cut short by a pandemic. What do you think about her resiliency? Oh my goodness. I think one ACL tear is enough to break you down, but to have two, um, definitely. I was actually talking to my dad about this today. I think I was like, the one good thing about this is that poor Alyssa has the time to heal her knees because that girl was broken down. Um, but no, Alyssa is such a hard worker and she, I know that she's going to do everything with her power to come back on the field, but she definitely put a lot of time in, in that college uniform. That's a lot of school she's doing, <laughs> but uh, she's making the most of it. And without her on the team, I don't think we'd be complete. So I'm so happy she's going to make whatever decision she's going to make. But obviously I think she's coming back, but uh, definitely just shows how resilient you are and the power of this game and just wanting to play and do that for her family and her teammates too. But Definitely one ACL tear is enough to break anyone down, but she's overcome so many humps and I know that she's just going to work even harder, but definitely this will be some good rest time for her knees because she's getting old in age, so needs to rest up. Anything else for Jesse? <laughs> All right, we'll uh, move on to Alyssa Palomino Cardoza. So anyone, uh, Ryan, go ahead. I mean, what have you kind of learned now throughout your career? I mean, two ACL tears and now a, a season cut short by a pandemic. What have you learned from the, the journey that you've had with Arizona softball? 
Um, I think to, you know, like Jesse said, um, don't take anything for granted. Um, it goes by super fast and I never thought I'd have a fifth year, let alone a chance for a sixth year. So um, definitely just, you know, soak up every moment of it. Um, learn everything you can. I've learned so much being in an Arizona uniform um, and I wouldn't trade this experience for the world. Um, I know I'm meant to be here, so I'm just taking it day by day. Yeah, Alyssa, you know, Ryan mentioned kind of, you know, your knee injuries and how you kind of fought through that. How do you prepare for a sixth year, um, knowing the toll that that might take on your knees? And what goes into that? Um, definitely time off, for sure. Um, you know, my knees always has just been a roller coaster throughout these five years. So the time off has been awesome. I've been doing a lot of rehab stuff at home, a lot of stuff that will continue to strengthen it. Um, so just continuing to do that to know what I can handle and what I can't handle. Um, so just knowing how to say yes and no to my body is definitely something I've learned. Um, so just taking that step by step and knowing that it will get stronger and I can get it to where I want it to be. So I remember last year you were saying that your teammates called you grandma. You you know, you were there. Now you're another year. Is it going to be great grandma or you know, just talk about your, your impact on younger players? Um, yeah, they've already started to call me great grandma and I've already made a joke about it. Um, but I'm excited. And, you know, like Jesse said, I get to play with a class I didn't think I was going to play with. And I have a relationship with some of them. I'm friends with them even before all this happened. So it'll be cool to, you know, get to experience um, a season with them and, you know, being a great grandma. <laughs> Oh, does, uh, does T want to go? I think she had her hand up before me. Hi. Um, so you've been in school for a very long time. Um, <laughs> do you have any more undergraduate classes that you're going to take? Or are you going to be going to grad school? Are you taking like a fifth major or something? Or um, Yeah, so I had already double majored. And I have decided to, instead of starting grad school, I'll be just adding a minor in sports management so I'm I put off graduation till next year <laughs> yep oh and then um I guess was your decision to come back another year as easy it was for Jesse I know she said that she wanted to come back instantly did you have any you know second thoughts about it or were you just instantly about ready for that sixth year yeah, it was an instant yes, um, and a lot of people have asked well, why, considering your body, and um, you know, I've talked to other people who are in my position with knee injuries, and it is hard, you know, there's a lot of pain and mental stuff that goes into it, but um, I started something in an Arizona uniform, and I want to finish it the way I want to, um, you know, playing four years and finishing four years is the goal, and in a heartbeat, it was easy to say yes, because, um, you know, I want to finish out with this team in this class and see what this team can do. You know, Jesse talked about Coach Candrea and, the, and what it's like to have a coach who's fighting for your extra year. Um, can you talk about that? Can you talk about, you know, how reassuring it was knowing that he was going to put whatever he could into getting you guys that extra year? Um, yeah, he treats us like we're his own kids, and we know that he would lay his life down for us. We know that he would do absolutely any for us, just like – um, we were his own. So it's always reassuring to know that he has our backs no matter what. Um, I know Kate and Coach I and Timo are the same way. Um, they let us know as well. Like they all four were going to fight for us no matter what. So I think having a coaching staff like that, um, you know, being led by coach is something that, you know, it's been a great experience. And, you know, we love having him as our leader and having them along as well. Any other questions? Oh, Jacob, go ahead. What are, what are some things you have been doing to kind of stay in shape and keep keep yourself occupied, I guess? Yeah, um, I've been doing a lot of, you know, knee exercises for my knee, a lot of body weight stuff. Um, I started running 
Um, don't know why I did that, but I've been running um, and me and my siblings play over the line. So, you know, we're just having some fun, you know, playing outside and being kids. Yeah, kind of jumping off of Coach Candrea, you know, what was your relationship like with uh, Athletic Director Hiki? And, you know, did you guys know much about him? What was kind of, uh, what was he like through the process? Um, he's been amazing. You know, he sends us updates weekly, you know, through like, our Arizona email. And um, we know he has our best interest at heart. Um, you know, whenever we walk around McHale or he would come to the field, um, he always knew who we were and always said hi, you know. Um, so I think he um, just wanted us to be able to go out on a note that we wanted to go out on and he wants us to be able to have the season we deserve. Um, he's been awesome in this process and has been completely supportive of what we want to do. Any other questions for either APC or Jesse Harper? All right, well, thank you everybody for, uh, oh, no, Ryan, Ryan's going to ask the last question, it appears. I well, was just going to ask, was there a point where you maybe thought your career was over, and if so, what was it like when NCAA voted to grant uh, spring athletes an extra year? Um, yeah, like Jesse said, it was all a big question mark, a lot of unknowns, a lot of thing that would things that would have gone into everyone getting another year or whatever it was. Um, I think they're in the beginning when everything first came out was the roughest, you know, we didn't know what was going on. You know, we thought, Oh, this, this is the end. But I think just sticking together is what helped a lot. Um, being able to talk to our teammates and talk to our coaches and knew that whatever the NCAA decided, um, even if they decided not to, we know we knew that we had a coaching staff and a school and a university that was going to help us fight for that year. Um, so I think as things progressed, we kind of, you know, came together and said, okay, whatever happens, like we're going to fight and we're going to play again. So I think we kind of just hung on to each other and had that support system. Anything else for either one of the seniors? No hands raised. Okay. All right. Thank you guys. Thank you. Same, same, safe. <laughs>